It was a photo showing black smoke billowing from Beirut moments after an Israeli airstrike on the city. Dramatic, yes. Truthful, no. The image, taken by a freelance photographer for Reuters, had been altered. Reuters is calling it the gravest breach of its standards and promised to remove all other photos taken by him from their database. But the issue it raises remain. How manipulated are we by the images that reach us throughout this conflict? Who is winning the propaganda war? And just what are we not being shown from the reams of footage that hit our screens each night? In a moment, we'll be hearing from a senior Reuters editor. First, Tim Huell. His report contains some disturbing images. This is the image of an Israeli attack on Lebanon sent out to news organisations around the world. This, it's alleged, the slightly less dramatic sight the photographer actually witnessed in the sky above Beirut. Not three flares, but only one. This is the picture of smoke rising from the bombed southern suburbs of the city he sent to the Reuters news agency. Much denser and darker than in the photo he originally took. The alterations came to light when several websites claimed the images showed obvious signs of being doctored by computer software. Many photojournalists agree there's obvious manipulation. He's dark in the sky, and on the sky he's decided, again, as I said, uh, it looks like he's just been tapping around, bringing the sky up. But it was so badly done. I mean, an amateur could do better. The, but that looks like what he's been doing. Just, and again, if you look at the one who's just who came out, look. It's boom, 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 the paintbrush marks. It's pathetic, really. Reuters today issued this statement. Reuters has withdrawn from its database all photographs taken by Beirut-based freelance Adnan Hajj after establishing that he had altered two images since the start of the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. Manipulating photographs in this way is entirely unacceptable and contrary to all the principles consistently held by Reuters throughout its long and distinguished history. It undermines not only our reputation, but also the good name of all our photographers. The mere fact that Hadj had altered two of his photographs means none of his work for Reuters could be trusted, either by the news services or its users. Tonight, on the line from Beirut, Adnan Hadj spoke exclusively to Newsnight, giving his first reaction to the allegations. Mr Hadj, can you tell us why the photos were changed, if they were changed? Cleaning the dust was on the picture. picture. One last question. What about the other picture, the picture of the F-16? No, no, it's perfect. There's no problem with it at all. I took the picture from the area of Nabatea and there's no problem with it. Not at all. Not at all. If pictures of the conflict in Lebanon aren't all they seem, that will be nothing new in the history of warfare. These images of First World War trenches may be genuine, but many similar ones were restaged back in England. Many of Churchill's most famous wartime speeches were actually broadcast by an actor. And more recently, the Daily Mirror was hoaxed by posed pictures supposedly showing abuse of prisoners by British troops in Iraq. Deliberate faking is one thing. It's condemned by all reputable news organisations. But in the fog of war, there are other forms of manipulation that are less easy to detect. And it's alleged that in South Lebanon, some images shown around the world may be the result of stage management of events by the organisation which can sometimes control access by journalists to the areas affected by Israeli bombing. And that's the militant group Hezbollah. On July the 30th, Israeli bombardment of the town of Kana killed 28 Lebanese, including 16 children. Pictures of the youngest victims being carried out of the rubble are already among the defining images of the conflict. But this website alleges the bodies were being transported purely for the benefit of the cameras by two men who weren't rescuers but were acting on behalf of Hezbollah. The disaster scene was set up, if you like, as a theatre set uh, where certain scenes were staged for the benefit of the media and the whole thing became not a record of a rescue, but one vast, grotesque uh, theatre staged to maximise, to milk as much sympathy, as much empathy and as much shock 
out of the situation as, uh, 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 as was possible. The Daily Telegraph was one of several British newspapers that published pictures of the recovery of children's bodies from the wreckage. Staff say they came from reputable agencies that would not have allowed themselves to be manipulated. But in any case, the basic truth the pictures convey is undeniable. I think it's limited. I think if there is a case here where Hezbollah are staging pictures for the benefit of the Western press, that's an issue. It's something we need to investigate, and it has been investigated by the agencies, and maybe working practices need to be changed as a result. But in terms of that specific image, it's a man with a dead child in his arms, and that child was killed in the bombing at Karna. So in that sense, it does reflect the story. Images of events like Karna will continue to be picked over, particularly by internet bloggers, for evidence of inconsistencies. How many are evidence of manipulation still isn't clear, but there'll be many more attempts to influence the outside world in a war that's about propaganda as much as force of arms. Tim Hill, just to clarify, there was no manipulation there on our part, uh, but that was a genuine gremlin. If you missed the sound, let me just bring that to you. Adnan Haj, the photographer, uh, saying that rather than seeking to manipulate the photo, he was merely attempting to clean some dust from it. A little earlier, we spoke to uh, Paul Holmes from Reuters and put that defence to him. Well, the, the, the image that ran did not look to us. I mean, I didn't... I didn't take part in the examination. It was professional, senior photographers from Reuters. We weren't convinced that merely cleaning dust off a frame uh, would lead to that sort of manipulation. And we've since discovered that a second photograph that, that we published from Adnan Hajj uh, had clearly been doctored to add in additional flares fired by an Israeli aircraft. You said this was senior photographers, but your own guys didn't spot it. This had to be pointed out to you by bloggers. I guess it raises the question, how many more times has this been done to you? Well, you know, I've worked for Reuters for 24 years, and this is the first time in my memory that we have received a complaint about the authenticity of a photograph, uh, and we've had to withdraw it. Clearly, there was a lapse in our editing process and we've taken steps as we announced today to tighten those editing procedures for photographs of the Middle East conflict. But, but the important thing to remember is that within 36 hours we've acted transparently, openly and decisively and the message we want to send and we do send is that we do not tolerate plagiarism, manipulation of photos or fabrication. OK, let me just ask you, you say it's the first time. Do you think that's because this war is more problematic than previous ones or because bloggers are slightly uh, more sophisticated now? We've never had this before, have we? Well, no. I mean, I actually welcome, and Reuters welcomes, the scrutiny that we come under from bloggers. Um, we will consider criticism from any source and we will take it seriously. And I think it has to be said as well that because of the blogging community, uh, many of the more egregious breaches of, of, of journalistic ethics have been exposed and it makes the media much more accountable and much more transparent. The bigger question, I guess, is how big a role is the media playing in all this? Obviously, you took those photos down because you didn't want uh, us to be manipulated, but do you think the media is playing a big role in deciding who actually wins this war? Well, I think the media in any conflict is in an extremely difficult position. You know, the, the, the best thing you can do is try to report as accurately, as truthfully and as fairly as you can from both sides. But throughout the history of, of photography and imagery, there have been cases where the media has been manipulated, where the media has been led down a garden path by one side or another or both, uh, for their own convenience. Paul Holmes, many thanks.